Hey everyone, so pretty much the biggest what if in the console space would be what if the enhanced consoles had upgraded CPUs as well as GPUs? Wouldn't PS4 Pro and Xbox One X be even more capable if they utilized AMD's Ryzen technology rather than sticking with the Jags? Well, maybe we could get some idea of what this mythical console could have been like because AMD has just revealed its latest semi-custom project a new SoC system on chip for a PC and console developed by Chinese hardware manufacturer Zhongshan Zubo. It's got four teraflops of GPU compute, putting it firmly in PS4 Pro territory. But yes, it's running Ryzen. So yeah, the machine looks pretty console-like, but that may well be the PC version of it, which will launch in China in the next month or so. But the hardware design developed in conjunction with AMD is fascinating. It strikes me as a bigger, beefier version of AMD's Raven Ridge APUs with a lot of design cues taken from PlayStation 4 and PS4 Pro. Okay, so here's a look at the silicon layout of Raven Ridge. From what AMD has revealed, the new SoC is similar in many ways. You retain the 4-core, 8-thread Zen core and the Vega graphics block, but the GPU is much, much bigger. There are 11 compute units in the Raven Ridge APU and that scales up to 24 in the Zubor project. However, while I reckon the overall layout is likely to be similar to AMD's latest APUs, the overall design is more console-like in nature. A look at an AMD AM4 motherboard here shows that the APU uses standard DDR4 memory, presenting a fundamental limitation in bandwidth. In common with PS4 and Pro, the new SoC integrates GDDR5 memory controllers onto the processor with 8 gigs of the stuff embedded on the motherboard itself. What this means is that the PC version of this new technology will offer the fastest fully integrated graphics solution seen on the market with well over double the compute power of Raven Ridge. But what it does mean, of course, is that you can't upgrade the processor and you can't upgrade the RAM. And in that respect, it's very console-like in nature. Side by side with the PS4 motherboard, you can see that the overall configuration is very, very similar. But the new board is going to be at the heart of a standard Windows PC. So there are PC-like ports. That looks like a couple of HDMIs at the back there, along with a bunch of USBs and possibly Toslink, while M2 and SATA ports seem to be at the front. IO-wise, obviously, it's a fair bit more comprehensive than what you get on a console. Further specs haven't been revealed so far, but with 8 gigs of GDDR5 confirmed, a 256-bit memory bus seems likely, and again, very similar to PS4 and Pro. We don't have specs for memory bandwidth at this time, but to give you some idea of the window available, PS4 Pro delivers around 218 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, while a top-end G5 solution, for example, like the one in GTX 1070, offers up 256 gigabytes per second. This figure could prove crucial to overall performance, as unlike a traditional PC with separate CPU and GPU, AMD's integrated processors need to share bandwidth across both components. So let's see how the new SoC compares to the PS4 Pro and Raven Ridge a bit more directly. So, Zubor's processor achieves Pro-like graphics compute levels in very different ways to a Sony solution. Now, Sony's custom processor effectively doubles the base PS4's compute unit count and adds on a small amount of frequency, delivering 4.2 teraflops from 36 CUs at 911 megahertz. The new Zubor chip runs faster at 1.3 gigahertz, but only features 24 CUs. It's also based on the latest AMD Vega design, whereas the Pro GPU is effectively an enhanced version of the original PS4 graphics core, with a number of additional features brought over from both later Polaris and Vega designs. Although offering less overall compute power, a 75 MHz overclock on the Zubor's Vega core will deliver the same 4.2 teraflops, but this does assume that overclocking is available on the new part. So, Zubor is promising an initial China-only PC release based on the new AMD part, which I am dying to test out for a number of reasons. Even with the OS and API overheads introduced by Windows, 
with specific titles, we should be able to get a fairly decent idea of what would have happened if the Zen CPU core had been combined with the rendering power of the current gen consoles. In fact, the new hardware has a 3 GHz quad-core Ryzen CPU, and that's actually a configuration I tested a while back. Now, in those tests, I used an overclocked Titan X Pascal at 1080p to ensure we were testing the CPU only. But even with those Windows and API overheads, performance was dramatically improved in games we know to be CPU bound. Here's Assassin's Creed Unity on the PS4 and Pro under boost mode. The game struggled at launch and it took a 31% CPU clock boost to get the title running smoothly at its target 30 frames per second. Even in the game's densest scenes, with the quality settings ramped up to ultra high, which will be higher than the consoles, obviously. 3 GHz Ryzen could run this at 60 frames per second. Just Cause 3 is a classic example of a CPU bound console game. The open world and physics just proved too much for the PS4 and even the Pro under boost mode to render effectively. But again, with only slight dips under 60 frames per second, the fully enabled ultra level PC version runs a lot faster despite the increase in quality settings and the Windows and API overheads. And yet, yeah, even The Witcher 3 gets an increase in frame rate via Ryzen. This title operated in a kind of 40 to 60 frames per second window on Xbox One X when set to its performance mode, and it's clearly CPU limited in taxing scenes like Novigrad. Again, even on Windows with all of its associated overheads and running on ultra settings, the Ryzen when running the game unlocked always keeps us above 60 frames per second and can even hit a max of around 120 in certain scenes. Now remember, this is CPU testing without GPU as any kind of bottleneck. But what about potential graphics performance? Well, here's the thing, at 3.99 teraflops, the new Vega GPU doesn't quite have the raw compute of the Pro, but if my maths is right, a 75 megahertz OC will bring it directly into line. The chip should also have the benefit of being a fully enabled brand new Vega part too. It's effectively a more modern GPU design compared to the Pro and even Xbox One X graphics cores. It's clear that it achieves its power from fewer compute units running at higher clocks. And yeah, we do have an example out there of a 24CU AMD graphics chip. Another semi-custom design, this time for Intel in its KB Lake G chipset. Now, I reviewed this in the NUC8 video I did a while back. Now, the AMD GPU in this is apparently more Polaris than Vega. It doesn't seem to have the rapid packed math functionality for starters, but it has the same CU count, and I managed to overclock it to 1350 MHz. So pretty much on par there with the new Zubor SoC. Looking at Battlefield 1, a game that favors AMD hardware, especially when running under DX12, you get an idea of where this GPU could fit into the PC hierarchy. At 1350 MHz, it's about 20% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, but the 1060 offers a good 33% boost. So yeah, it's kind of in the middle there. For what it's worth, the RX 580 is just a smidgen faster than the 1060 in this bench, but you get the idea. Here's another quick benchmark. Rise of the Tomb Raider, which traditionally has an Nvidia BIOS, even under DX12. Again, GTX 1060 across all three segments of this bench. It's around 30% faster overall, but the KB Lake G AMD GPU extends its lead over GTX 1050 Ti. Now, some leaked benchmarks for what we think is the Zubor APU actually see it pushing ahead of the KB Lake G graphics core in performance terms. So yeah, I'll be interested to see that in action. I'd sound a note of caution there though. We don't know how much memory bandwidth the design has, and we also need to remember that the memory bandwidth will be shared between CPU and GPU, which doesn't happen on KB Lake G. Secondly, it may be the case that this SoC will use Raven Ridge's memory split, which allocated a max of just two gigs for the GPU in a world where three gigs is required to match the console experience at 1080p on most titles. Of course, in a PS4 game, developers can split up the available memory as they see fit, and I don't think that will be available here. But the fact that we are getting what is 
very much a console design shipped as a Windows PC is fascinating in itself because it will answer a question I've had for a very long time. What if AMD could make a console-like APU for the PC space? How well would a pro-like GPU run under Windows? I mean, there's a reason why AMD's line of desktop PC APUs are typically backed by entry-level graphics cores. The memory bandwidth simply isn't there for standard DDR4 to support a more capable graphics solution. Only a custom board with embedded high bandwidth memory could get the job done, and until now, such a solution has never been released. There's a good reason why, of course. You'd never be able to upgrade anything about it, apart from the storage. For the curious and the cash rich, export options should be available. And I'm certainly fascinated enough to give it a shot, simply because it is unique and answers a lot of questions I've had about A, how Ryzen can improve performance in a console box, and B, how a Windows PC could run on very console-like hardware. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on one soon, but in the meantime, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe to support the work we do here at Digital Foundry. And of course, if you'd like to help us more directly, please consider the DF Patreon, where everything we do is available as a pristine quality download. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.